set up the hierarchy is that the COO and the CTO are assistants. So when I select Dan and I click Add Assistant, bada bing, bada boom, there it is. I now have my box in place that is now an additional assistant. So I've got James here, and now I have a new one right here. Now what I'm going to have to do is I can come over here, and of course you can double click on this, and you can format it, you know, edit the text. You can do it this way. Again, right click menus, always good. Or, if you want, you can come up here and just click on the text pane. And what we need to do is say, ah, here it is. We've got Dan, here's James, and now I've added another assistant over here. So I just click over in here, and now I can start typing in that I want that to be Jer not Jeremy, Jeremy C C T O. So now I've got Dan, I've got James, and I've got Jeremy. So now well, I can start adding other people. So, for example, we could say that Dan, uh, maybe we have um, the uh, Mike is the resident composer. Mike Shannon, he reports directly to Dan. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and add Mike's name down here. Mike S. Resident Composer. Now, notice, when I type in the text box here, it automatically resizes so that everything looks the same. So I'll go ahead and close this, and let me scroll down. Now you can see how, because I typed Mike Dash Resident Composer, and it kind of needed to squish it to fit into these boxes, um, it automatically resized the text for the other boxes, which, now that can be good, it can be bad. Let's say James, Dan, and Jeremy are like, hey, we're the big bosses, we want big, big, huge uh, you know, type set. Well, you can do that. You can come up here and you can obviously reset any of this and notice it says, well, 18, what do you want it to be? And then I can come over here and put on 44, 60, or 96. So you can still format these as individual boxes if you want. Just don't, you know, think that you can. Now, right now, notice how my org chart is a little off based upon what I know about org charts. For example, all the rest of the people are going to report to, like James as the CEO, will probably handle sales. So myself as the VP of sales would report to James. And uh, so would the marketing person. Whereas Roy as the VP of manufacturing would report to Jeremy as the CTO. And if you notice, all I've got are these two subordinate boxes left that report to Dan. Obviously, not a problem. All I need to do is select these two. Let's delete these. Let's say we don't want these below. Select them, select them. Now we're back to where we have the people that we have. Now to edit this, I can merely come over to COO James Conrad and say, I want a new object that reports directly to James. So I click Add Shape. Remember, always select the one that you want to add the shape to, below, above, wherever it is. And I say, I want to add a shape below. So now, someone that reports to James is going to be myself, right? Now I go ahead and bring up my text box. Type in here, Chris W, VP Sales. So there I am. So that's good. Now we can, you know, click off here. I can close my text box. We can come up here and say, okay, well, I'm a VP of Sales. Who would, um, you know, report to me? Well, Jeff G, he's a sales manager. What do I do? I select on that. I come up here to add shape, add shape below, and now, of course, I've got a sales manager position for Jeff G. So I come over here and I click on my text box again. And notice, each time that I do this, it shows you the hierarchy right here, even in the text type text box over here. So I know I'm getting close to the edge here, but we can do that. Now I've got Jeff G. Sales Manager. So you have all these different options here for what we can do. And if you want, let's say I want to move something from right to left. You can switch this from a left to right to a right to left. If I click on that, notice now Jeremy's over here on this side, and now you know all I've done is kind of do a mirrored flip. So this is what this adds adds to us. Now. Anytime you select something like this, you'll notice that the change comes up. We can change the branch layout for the selected shape. If I select this, I can do standard, both, where it comes on uh, you know, vertically centered and range it below, or I can do a left hanging, or I can do even a right hanging if I want to. So you can change the different ways that everything works. You can also, if you want, notice that uh, um, I've got uh, Chris W. VP of Sales, right? and I want to move him. See right here? I can promote somebody. Right now, I can promote myself 
up to the next level of the selected bullet or shape. So I can go ahead and promote myself. And now guess what? I'm on the same level as Mike because I report directly to Dan. Oh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted to do. Well, I can demote my selection. And then, of course, now I'm back to reporting to uh, James right here. Notice when you do make these changes, however, that all of a sudden, James here has now got two people. Because I got um, pretty much moved, now all of a sudden Jeff directly reported to James. So anytime you make adjustments on this, look at how smart art, because it's smart, goes in and makes the changes necessary. Now if you need to, of course, this diagram is pretty big. So let's go ahead and take this. You can grab a corner and you can move it and resize it and bring it in like that. So now it's a little smaller. But let's say we want this to appear over on the side of Dan, James, and that way it shows up over here to the side. How do we do that? Well, remember, on anything that you do, you are going to have to format this as part of your text wrapping. So if you're up on the, um, on the SmartArt tools, the design and the format that you have. If you go over here to format, you can see you have a lot of different things where you can arrange things, including over here, just kind of off to the side, is text wrapping. So when I select the text wrapping, it's going to give me the same things I'm familiar with. You can kind of see right here uh, to the side. In fact, let me resize my window here so you can see this just a little bit better. Okay, so we can arrange and now you can see here's the text wrapping right here. And so when I select text wrapping, it's going to show up um, over here and we can say, okay, we want the square tight. So I can do tight. And now once I do this, now when I move this particular uh, diagram, notice how it doesn't adjust and wrap around. So I can now move this up right smack dab next to what I have here. And so now when you're looking at my document, my Acme Musical Instruments Incorporated, hey, no problem. Now I can see the list and now I see the org chart which follows immediately after it. Now I've created this document, right? And I've got this nice diagram here. And if I want to make some changes to it, I've already shown you some of the basic stuff, but here's a couple of really neat, nifty things that we can do. If I go in and select my uh, diagram, just select any piece of the object or click over on it, you'll see that now I can still do with my smart art tools some of the formatting changes that I want to do. Now this is kind of nice because like with anything, if I select something, you can see that right now I currently have certain types of the shape styles. You know, you've got the uh, black, you've got the blue, You've got colored outlines, and you know each one of these is different. Uh, you know that's the one that we're colored fill. We're using one accent one. We can change. Maybe uh, Dan is the CEO. We'll make him purple, uh, so that way he looks a little bit uh, you know different than everybody else, or you know orange, or you know whatever whatever color you want to do. Remember, just roll over any one of these. You can change the. Now these are pre-built styles. You can also man manipulate uh, individual characteristics like the actual color um, itself that you want to do of the lines. If you notice in the background here that we have the line color is changing around the box. So that's your shape outline. If you do the fill, uh, you know, we have the blue there for a while. Well, now we've got the uh, orange if we want to change that. And you can see the color showing up there in, in the back, in the background there. So these are different things. The shape effects itself. Uh, do you want a shadow? Uh, you know, which type of shadows do you want to drop? Do you want a reflection? Do you want a glow? Uh, a bevel. So right now you can kind of see in the background there a little bit if we add the bevel you can see how it's manipulating and changing it right up here uh, just by rolling and scrolling over each one of those. 3D rotation. How do you want it to look in a 3D imaging? These are all things that we saw on some of the other art, word art that we had in effects and text boxes. These are still available to us. Now the word art itself, if you're using the word art, remember the actual text and things like that. Let's click off of here is you'll notice that the text now is going to change compared to on what you're doing here or again if I select down here and change the color of uh, the, the text we can do that we can use the theme colors we can use um, standard colors we can use pictures in the background I mean you can do gradients textures you know anything else that you can think of on that as well as the text outline so if you want to use a different fill color for the text and then use a different outline to kind of make it pop out and even some text effects you can add those same things that you saw earlier you could add you know a shape offset right left inner 
uh, you know, it's kind of small, so you can't see everything going on. 3D rotation. Uh, you can see how now the text is kind of rotating in 3D there as an example. So you can even transform the text. This is kind of fun. Uh, if you want to, you know, change, you know, follow the path or down here on wrap. All different types of ways that you can manipulate the actual text within the object. The sky is the limit. We saw the arrangement, and that shows you again how to um, add the text wrapping and the alignment. You can even rotate. And also, you can select the position on the page, and then the text will wrap around that object. In other words, you're basically saying, look, this is where this is. Everything else can wrap around it. So you can come in here, and you can say in line with text. Notice how it moves. You can do it above, position in top left, to the right, to the left. And you can notice it's moving as I, as, I, as I do this. So, you know, whatever you want it to be, you have that option. Okay, so these are just different ways that you can do it in line with the text. So those are just like text positions. One is the t kind of it's uh, the way that we look at it is whether you want to do it in, pr in how the text reacts to the object or how the object reacts to the text is essentially what you're looking at for those different things. Now, after we've added all these things, you can obviously change just about anything that you can think of in the sense of adding things. Now, one neat nifty thing that I want want to show you. Remember how I had, I'll come back here to design, and remember I had my text pane over here, and uh, let's, let's move my text pane over here. Let's say that I wanted to add another uh, person for uh, that reports to James. So I'm here on James, right? I can come over here to add a shape, and of course we want somebody that reports to James. Who's going to be? That's going to be. That's going to be Emily, who's the vice president of marketing. So we click on Add Shape Below, and you'll notice that now you have another shape that's right here that reports to James. Of course, we could have gone immediately after Jeff G and hit Enter and created another bullet, just like we see. Now, so far, what have I been doing? I've been going in and typing. Part of the great thing that you have here with your text pane is I can come over here, and I can highlight Emily B. Vice President of Marketing, okay, I can hit the copy, and then when I come back over here, I can come over here, and I can just merely paste in Emily. Look at that. Emily B, VP of Marketing. And now Emily now shows up exactly how I, how I have her listed her. So this is one of the powerful features of using the text pane. You can, If you've got text or some document with all this information, why sit there and type it manually when it's already been done for you? So this is just one other way that you can utilize your text pane as well to manipulate how things are going. And again, anything that you think of can be pretty much done now with SmartArt, especially when it comes to any of those diagrams. Whenever you're creating anything for diagrams, we obviously know now smart art is the way to go. You can do some really cool diagramming techniques, whether it's org charts, Venn diagrams, matrix diagrams, process things. All those things are good. We also saw how we can modify those diagrams, the color, the, the shape, the look, the feel, where it's placed upon the page, even if we need to add elements to a diagram like the org chart. And when we're doing that, hey, that text pane, it's pretty handy, isn't it? I can type in things or I can even paste, copy and paste, cut and paste, whatever I need to do. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Charts and Data. We know that most people like using Excel for all of the cool features that you can utilize with that, but sometimes you just need a simple little chart showing some simple little data in a way that a business professional or a group can understand. This nugget is going to show you how. Whenever you start talking about charts and data, a lot of people panic just a little bit. I don't want you to panic. Creating a chart is easy as clicking that insert and chart. But hey, wait a minute, that looks like Excel. Actually it is, but it's a little small component that's going to run within Word 2007. Don't panic, it's going to be easy. We'll show you how to link data and even how to modify the chart so the look and feel matches your personality or your document's personality exactly.
When you add a chart to any document that's created in Word 2007, they're going to give you a sample chart that embeds itself into the document. And the data used to plot the sample chart is simply an Excel 2007 spreadsheet that's just kind of put in there with some sample data that they have. And uh, the nice thing is, is that this is not a separate file. It's all linked into your Word